Hi, in this video we look at what's included in a $10,000 vlogging setup and why. That's coming up. Just look at that view at the top of Skidor Mountain. Hi, I'm Adam and welcome to First Man Photography. Now, I know a lot of you have just recently started a vlog or you are looking to start a vlog, so I thought I would make this video to share a few of the things I've learned over the last couple of years of vlogging. Now, like you, I do not have $10,000 lying around to spend on gear. I've worked hard, I've been patient, and I've built it up over time. So hopefully you'll be able to see what gear is gonna work for you and what won't, what things are important, and then decide what you're going to use. The other day I was renewing my insurance and I realized $10,000 was about the cost of my vlogging gear. It was a little bit disturbing that I've spent that much money, but I've just been trying to develop my vlogs to take it to the next level. And that's just ha happens to be the amount of money I, I've spent. I don't spend money on a lot of other things, but that's happened. So it was a little bit frightening. But there we go. So the main part of my vlogging setup is the Canon 800D. I have this here and it's a pretty common vlogging system and I have it on the Gorillapod, which is beautiful for this kind of thing. It works as a selfie stick like this, but it also lets you spread the legs out and use it as a tripod in any given situation. I've chosen this Canon 800D for a few reasons. Firstly, it's a DSLR, so you get that bigger sensor than you do on compact cameras and it's got really good quality. It's also relatively inexpensive. It's a beginner level DSLR, which also makes it quite light for carrying around all day. It's got the flip out screen here. You need to be able to see in that screen what you are doing. And it also has the Canon dual pixel autofocus, which at the moment is without comparison it's the best autofocus system out there. Since I've been vlogging on this camera, it has not missed focus on my face once. It is slightly cheaper than the Sony mirrorless cameras and you also have the versatility of using interchangeable lenses, which is important for me as a photographer. The 800D or T7i doesn't have 4K, but you're not going to need 4K when you first start out. A lot of YouTube is consumed on an iPad or a phone and that is not in 4K, so it really isn't absolutely essential at the moment. It also creates problems around storage and editing the footage. It's much harder to do with 4K. So the 1080p that this provides is going to be just fine. Next thing is the lens. If you're shooting on a compact camera, most of the compact cameras have a lens with a focal length of 24 to 70. I'm using this 10 to 18 millimeter lens, which has the sort of 35 millimeter equivalent of 16 millimeters. And when you hold it up like this, it just puts you that little bit further back. So I'm on the vlogging camera now, and this is roughly what you'd see if you were using a compact camera with that 24 to 70 millimeter lens. I've got my arm extended pretty far away from me, but I still feel like I'm quite close to you. On the other hand, if we turn this lens to 10 millimeters, it puts me much further away and it just feels much more natural and I'm not right up in your face. It's less intrusive and it's just better for the overall story and the overall look. Okay, microphone wise, I'm using two things at the moment. I have the Rode VideoMic Pro, which just sits on top of the camera. That's an easy solution. It captures good sound in most situations. The problem with the Rode VideoMic Pro is that it's susceptible to wind noise and because it's sitting on top of the camera, you also pick up some of the lens noises when it auto focuses. This is the Rode Filmmaker Kit. It sits on top of the camera like this and it's a wireless system to a pack that you wear on your side 
and then it has a lavalier microphone. The good thing about lavalier microphones is if it's windy, you can just turn your back on the wind and then you're still gonna capture that really nice audio. It's a good system, it works well. It's important for me to have the audio going straight into the camera because if you're shooting by yourself, you need things to be simple and I want it to record the sound and I press stop and start on the camera. So for a long time, I shot with just this system. You can get some good video from this and it's gonna work well in the vast majority of situations. But this is the $10,000 vlog setup. So let's move on to the next thing. Next is the Canon 5D Mark IV. This is an absolute beast. I use it for my landscape photography, my wedding photography, wildlife photography, and water drop photography, and it does it all. What I now use it for is shooting my B-roll. B-roll is hugely important when you're creating films and vlogs because you want to be able to cut in and out of the talking head and add some layers and some interest to your videos. And this can capture some really good quality footage. This camera will shoot 120 frames per second, which allows you to capture some really beautiful and interesting slow motion footage, which all adds to the experience. And that's why I've started using that. What this camera also lets me do is as I put a nice big aperture lens on the front, it lets me capture some of those really beautiful shallow depth of field shots. And in order to capture those as well, you're going to need an ND filter because when you're outside and it's bright, when you open the aperture up to things like f2.8, it lets a lot of light in. So you start to overexpose your shot unless you use an ND filter like this. This is a variable ND filter. It's expensive, but it's worth having because you can adjust it so you can have it wide open like that. And then as you turn it, it gets darker and darker so you can have the right amount of light coming into your camera at all times. It also lets you control the exposure of your camera really smoothly during a shot because if you do that with the aperture or the ISO, the camera tends to jump and it just looks horrible in your shots. But you can do it really smoothly with this to the point in your b-roll where you just won't notice it. A good investment. Next up we have the drone. This is the DJI Mavic Pro. It literally adds another level to your footage. Having those aerial shots lets you create the establishing moments which just puts the viewer in the place where you are and gives them a better sense of the story you're trying to tell. A really good bit of kit. It's easy to fly but it's important to try and get really good quality footage with smooth movements, nice shots, and that's the hard thing when it comes to that. Another thing that makes up the $10,000 vlogging setup are accessories. Things like batteries, memory cards that you just don't want to run out of uh, because it can ruin your entire shoot. I also carry a nice bag because I want to get everything in and I also want to have easy access to all my gear. Being prepared and making stuff as straightforward as possible on the day is what lets me get everything done. I don't want to be faffing around with gear that goes wrong because it just detracts from me telling my story of the day. So do you need a $10,000 vlogging setup? Absolutely not. The gear actually doesn't matter that much. It does help in getting the best quality shots possible, but the most important thing by some distance is you and the story you're trying to tell. You can actually do it all with a mobile phone. You can shoot yourself, you can do slow-mo, you can do time lapses, it's all on here. So if you're thinking about doing a vlog or starting a vlog, don't let the gear be the thing that stops you. Do what I've done and build it up over time and you'll know what the next thing is that you need as that problem starts to present itself or you want to take your footage to the next level. Okay, so that's the $10,000 vlogging setup. Please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see some of my vlogs where I get out and about into the wilderness shooting landscape photography. I've also got tutorials on photography and some video stuff like this one, and I'd love it if you subscribed to the channel. Please leave a comment down below as well and let me know what you think. I'm not bragging, it's just the amount of money I've spent over time as I've worked hard, built up and saved the money to buy this gear, and it's working for me at the moment, and I just wanted to share a few of my thoughts about the gear with you so you can then forget about the gear and go and create some really good videos. Anyway, I'll see you on another one very, very soon. I'm Adam. This is First Man Photography in the studio. I'll be out and about again soon. Out.